guys, it's Patch. Uh, I recently got hold of a van, well, back in December, uh, and I spent a few weeks over Christmas uh, kind of doing it up as a camper van, and uh, I finally kind of got the last bits in that I had to wait for. Um, so it's all good to go now, ready for the end of the month when uh, at least the UK is let free uh, to do stuff responsibly, of course. Um, so I'll just give you a quick tour around it, show you kind of what I've done. Uh, it's a pretty minimal one. It's not designed to be lived in or anything like that. So it's just kind of got what I need. Uh, definitely form over uh, function over form. Um, and I'll show you around. And um, if you've got any questions or anything, please put them down in the comments. Uh, the van itself is a Ford Transit Custom uh, 64 plate. It's pretty high spec though. It's got cruise control and all the bells and whistles and etc. Um, so pretty happy with with the van itself. I was looking for a VW Transporter originally. I quickly found out that you can get a lot more for your money uh, if you go elsewhere. Um, and yeah, I think it's, this has got about 92,000 miles on the clock. Uh, it was a pretty good price as well, so happy with it. Okay, the cab itself is pretty uh, regular. Um, I wanted it, the van to be as kind of stealthy as possible um, so that people wouldn't necessarily know it is a camper van uh, without looking in the back. So there's no windows or anything in the back. Uh, there are lights, of course, but uh, just the doors. There's no windows. People can't see in uh, if you're sleepy or whatever, which I prefer, to be honest. I've got this curtain that goes all the way across. It's a it was kind of a, a set of two curtains that are just put back to back. And it's just on a runner. So if you needed more light, you can just bring that across. Uh, so that's pretty good. Um, you can't really get to the cab from the back. You could if you wanted to, but... I mean, just you can just step out from there. I was debating putting a swivel on the passenger bench seat here so that would turn around, but it seemed a lot more hassle than it was worth. It's quite expensive as well. Um, so I'd bend that off. Might do it eventually, but there's no, no rush. In the back here then, uh, that door is just kind of carpeted with automotive carpet. I think I'll put a bit of thin plywood over the top to kind of keep that back. Um, on another video, I'll talk about all the materials that I've used um, to do it, but there's basically a lot of insulation behind there and it's kind of saggy a bit. So I might put uh, a bit of plywood across there to kind of pin it back. Let's open this up. And then through the side door, uh, we've got a permanent bed in here. I'll show you that more. And in a second, we've got a chest that's got the electrics and all cooking stuff in it, easy access. And we've got the table, um, which I'll bring up and show you in a second. And then underneath the bed, we've got all the storage, which I'll show you from the back. Uh, up here, I've just got a kind of stowage net. Um, I wanted, because it's quite a small van, it's not like a sprinter or a big kind of stand-up van or etc. I didn't want overhead um kind of cupboards or anything because i'm six one i'm just bang my head on it um so if i hit my head on that it's not gonna hurt uh, i've just got a kind of uh bakshi like layer if i get back from a walk it is i'm all wet i just throw that on get nice and comfortable get warm uh lighting in here i've got just these push lights warm white lighting and um, i was debating having lights that are recessed into the cladding um, but if something goes wrong, I can just take this off nice and easy and replace it. That's kind of the thinking I've used with the van in general, just kind of a modular system where if something goes wrong, it's nice and easy to fix. So nothing's really embedded into the cladding, into the building work of the van, which I quite like. So inside this chest then, this lifts up. It's just a bit of cushion that I've actually reused from off cuts from the uh, mattress. This is a just a cover that I just made from fabric. It's actually just foam underneath here. So this is essentially just a mattress cover. And this is the excess material and foam um, that I've used for the top of the chest here. In here we've got kind of uh, cleaning, cooking stuff, easy access, like washing up bowl, pots, pans, little towel, gas, stove. Um, and then here we've got the spare battery. It's a deep cycle leisure battery, which is connected to a split charge relay and then connected to sockets. 
so there is uh, a double USB socket there and a 12 volt socket there. So that's all, all I really need to be honest. I don't need anything major just to be able to charge stuff. Again, I'm not living in the van. So that's all I really need. A uh, split charge relay, for those who don't know, basically it means that this battery will charge when the engine's on, the alternator's on. So it'll charge from the alternator uh, as well as the car battery, which is under the driver's seat. Uh, it also means that when this goes dead, or if I ever used uh, this battery enough that it would go dead, then the this would stop the socket using uh, power from the car battery. So I won't be left high and dry without power. Fingers crossed anyway. Uh, I've got one of those push lights in here as well, uh, so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, that's the chest. Uh, I've got a little spice rack here, obviously, because there's no excuse not to be bougie when you're out and about. Um, I like cooking and it's a little bit of morale when you're, to give a bit of flavour to your outdoor food, to your mountain house meals if you're in America, etc, etc. Uh, I've got a little clog bike stand here, um, although I'd actually use this. This is if I take another bike out. Um, okay, basically the tyre goes in there and the bike's across here. But when you're in motion, the bike kind of moves. So you have to strap it back onto these and under here, um, which is just a bit more faff. And I'll show you when I'm around the back, but the bike just goes between the back doors and the edge of the bed. And it fits quite, quite snug there. Okay, so I'll get the table up. So the table's fastened down by this deadbolt here. Just lift that up, slide that across. And basically that deadbolt, along with these magnets here, stop the boxes under there here sliding and hitting this table out of the way so they kind of keep it sturdy. So this is a bit of a test to do it one-handed. So these ropes just kind of coil around this little hook that I've got here and then they hook up to these pegs that are up here which can obviously also be used to hang clothes uh, and they basically hold the table up. Super simple, just a bit of 12mm uh, ply, um, holes drilled in and then a kind of monkey fist knot that my girlfriend loving, lovingly did um, and they, they're kind of held under tension to hold them up. And then underneath here is just a piano hinge for it to hinge up on. Dead simple. Uh, again, if any of that goes wrong, it's uh, easy to replace. And uh, I'm not going to worry about anything because it's not, not too expensive or whatever. So happy for it to get beaten up a bit and I can just replace it if and when it breaks. Uh, so the bed itself then, uh, again, a bit of 12mm ply. Uh, here and then I've got these uh, Scorva um, kind of bed frame struts here. They're from IKEA, obviously, as the name suggests. Uh, and I've got one, two, three of those underneath. And there's holes that are drilled into the ply to let the mattress kind of breathe a bit, uh, so it doesn't get mouldy in the middle. Uh, these struts um, kind of hook on um, to these brackets that I've just made. These are just bits of metal and that I've got a bit of a lip on over this uh, bit of timber here, and they kind of extend. You can see where the join is here. So however wide your van is, they kind of extend and hook on, which is uh, super useful because it means you don't have to kind of custom make anything. Uh, they just extend to the width and then hook on, and nice and sturdy. And then I've drilled those struts underneath onto the wood to stop them moving about because they were moving about a bit and it was irritating. Uh, duvet wise, uh, I've just got a kind of a double sleeping bag. I've got a pretty cushy one. It's the Cooley 2 Twin, minus six degrees Celsius apparently. Uh, I'll give that a try out uh, when I can, um, but it feels super, co super comfy at the moment. So looking forward to that. I'll just take this table down. locks in there. I'll tie those strings up in a second. They just go up onto that. Uh, got a bottle cap map uh, when I go around the country, but a bottle cap from there gives a bit of decoration. 
And I've got a little laptop table, so when you, we're lying in bed, laptop fits perfectly on there. Again, same principle as a big table with the string holding that up. And then that can just get locked away using the bolt here. So it's out the way. Again, a couple more lights up here for if we're reading in bed. Um, and yeah, you can see that everything's kind of designed with function in mind rather than form. It's just like, if I need this, it's in it. Rather than kind of making it too homely, I might put, I don't know, I might put some fairy lights or something because that seems to be a requirement with camper vans or like, I don't know, a pot plant or something. But yeah, uh, I'll go around to the back now and show you what I've got in, I suppose you can call it a garage, but that's probably a bit of a grand term for it. Okay, so like I mentioned before, the bike kind of fits well just on the floor here between the uh, kind of edge of the bed and when the doors are shut, it kind of wedges it in nice and nice and snug. Uh, on the back here, I've got the back doors cladded as well, um, which I'm somewhat regretting actually because I'm debating putting a ladder on the back door here and most of them are kind of screw in uh, so you need kind of bolt on the inside, but that's a problem for another day. Uh, I've got a couple of door handle type things here to pull the doors shut when we're inside. Otherwise, you kind of need to shut it from the outside or trap your fingers doing it awkwardly here. Uh, a couple of mesh net pockets, a uh, head torch in this one, just because you can never have too many. And a little tarp thing to stand on when it's wet. Uh, another door on this side. These brackets kind of stop the doors extending uh, too far, but you can bring them out if you need to. I don't really find that I need to do that. So there we go. Uh, I've got a decent cool box. The van hasn't got a fridge. Um, I just didn't think it would warrant the space. So I've got a really decent cool box. It's kind of a Yeti style one, but without the brand because that would double the price. And obviously it's covered in stickers because you can't love the outdoors and not love stickers as well. It's just a given. So I'll take them out. And then underneath here, I've got boxes full of kit, kayaking, rock climbing kit, cycling, running stuff, kayak paddle, walking, maps, miscellaneous torches, stoves, etc. Uh, 20 litre uh, water kind of jerry can thing uh, that can just kind of sit down here and then we can use it as and when. Uh, the one thing I haven't figured out is a shower. I've been debating getting one of those camp shower things, but uh, I might just get a big, they seem a bit small, I don't know. I might just get a dry, big dry bag and just poke some holes in the bottom and just use that. It's a bit, bit tin pot, but can't see why it wouldn't work. Uh, again, in the back, the mattress cover, you can just see uh, and then the bed is exactly the same with the three struts and the holes in the back in case you didn't see it from the front So that's all the stuff in the back. Uh, you can see I've still got a bit more storage space if I need it. The bike's in. I'm going to shut the doors Ta-da! All fits in under the front seats, this is the uh, passenger bench seat type thing. Uh, there's a bit of storage space. I've got a lightweight camp chair and a towel in case of, not right now, but in case I've been swimming or kayaking or whatever. A um, bit more storage space underneath there. Under the passenger seat is just the car battery, which is quite a good access for um, linking it to the leisure battery, which is in the chest. Uh, just on the exterior of the van then, um, Again, you can't really see that it is a camper van from the outside. Um, if I have like my kayak and a roof bag, roof box or something, you might be able to guess, but nothing is uh, really saying there's a camper van. Although I was thinking about putting some decals on the side, which might give it away. Um, I've got one of these kind of window deflector things. Well, a pair, obviously, one for the driver's side as well. Um, they kind of just glue on, super simple, got it from Amazon, and they kind of stop rain coming in so you can crack the window a bit, get a bit of ventilation. Um, and they stop rain coming in. They also deflect wind away so that it's not all buffeting when the window is open. 
and I've got a set of Rhino 3 uh, three bar delta bars uh, on the back here. Got these second hand. Um, they seem absolute bomber. They seem pretty pretty sturdy, and they're just for transporting my kayak really. Um, I have looked up. I was going to get a roof box, um, but the distance between the bars is actually too big. So I might need to figure out a workaround for that. I was thinking of getting a roof rack instead of a roof bars. Um, but it's just a lot cheaper. It's about 400 quid for a rack, whereas this, these were like 50 quid second hand. Uh, like I said before, I was thinking about getting a ladder for the back uh, because it's a bit of a lick getting a kayak up onto the bars. Uh, it's, it's doable, but if I could... It's easier if I can climb up a ladder and then do all the ragged strapping on top. Um, but again, if you want a ladder, I recommend doing it before you do all the cladding and inside work. Okay, so that's a little look around the inside of the van. Um, I'll probably do another video explaining how I kind of did everything in brief terms um, because I appreciate not... Some people might just be interested in what some camper vans might have in and not actually the materials used if they're not actually looking at doing it themselves. So wait out for a video on the actual materials used in that, in doing it, if you're interested. Uh, the van itself took me, to make kind of habitable and usable and everything, it took me 19 days and that wasn't working every day either. So that was yeah, a few weeks over Christmas, I did it all. And then it's just been like random things like putting like the net and like the all sorts like little bits in after that um but it just shows that you can do it pretty quickly uh it would have taken longer if i got a bigger van but um yeah that's uh, i'll probably do a video on how to decide what van you want to get because i spent a long long time uh researching and looking at what van i wanted to get but uh yeah i hope you enjoyed it um please comment it below any ideas experiences you've had uh if you're into this as well and please like and subscribe i uh, really appreciate it those who do uh so yeah uh, thank you for watching and uh wait out for the next video